Would you consider using urban legends in movie plots lazy writing? Or is it innovative? I suppose it really depends on the quality of the movie in the end, eh? Either way, we're all familiar with the frequent and sometimes shameless use of pre-existing stories and fearsome fare. Folks are all scared of similar stuff in the end, why not capitalize on preformed fear? Sometimes the use of urban legends can be top-notch though, and even more rare, some movies might even make their own urban legends and elevate them to true legend status. We'll touch on a little bit of both of those today. Hello, horror heads, and welcome back to the scariest channel on YouTube, Top 5 Scary Videos. I'm your horror host, Keegan Hughes, and today we're going to be taking a look at the top five scary horror movie urban legends. Before we get started, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more widespread woe. Perfect. Let's begin. Coming in at number five, we've got Bigfoot. After Blair Witch turned the found footage world on its head, a lot of folks tried to cash in big. Copycat movie after copycat movie was forced down the pipeline with a variety of results. Most, as one might expect, were pretty rough. But a few managed to squeeze some sizable scares out of audiences. Willow Creek is one such movie. Praised and derided in equal measure with comparisons to Blair Witch, this 2013 indie flick is a fascinating experience. We follow an intrepid couple as they trek into the woods of Willow Creek in search of Bigfoot. They're making a documentary on Bigfoot lore, you see, which gives them a fantastic excuse to lug a camera everywhere. Let's focus on the urban legend rather than the camera work though. It's a fresh and freaky update on the classic Bigfoot myth. People have been spotting Sasquatches and Yetis for ages. You know the story, a hairy humanoid rummaging around in the woods. But photos and footprints are never quite enough to satisfy folks now are they? Is finding a famous cryptid a good idea though? Probably not. And we learn exactly why as the couple head deeper into the woods. Locals laugh and joke with the duo and warn them away from the hunt for Bigfoot, but they carry on. They should have listened. As they camp out near the location where some famous footage was shot, strange noises can be heard. Is it just the locals messing with them or is Bigfoot really around? Now, I had always assumed that Bigfoot was just a big, shy, gentle giant, keeping to itself as best it could. But if we're gonna take Willow Creek lore as true, it's probably best if we keep to ourselves in the end. Bigfoot has a violet side and tends to take human women as unwilling wives. Oh boy. Coming in at number four, we've got Cropsey. If you're not from Staten Island, this urban legend might be foreign to you. For years, young New Yorkers have heard tales of this horrifying figure that stalks the streets. Friends would scare each other with the story of a hook-handed man that would drag boys and girls into the abandoned Seaview Hospital. However, one day this story became all too real. A drifter named Andre Rand started allegedly attacking children in the 70s and continued doing so until the late 80s. This ex-janitor had worked in an institution that was eventually shut down because it became apparent that children were were being abused. Over the next decade, five children would disappear. Eventually, these disappearances would be linked to Rand and he was thrown in prison. With the urban legend and these crimes being so similar, the idea of Cropsey was more real than ever. Director Tony Malum then decided to adapt the horrific myth into the movie The Burning. It's a loose adaptation, but it works. Plot concerns a summer camp caretaker named Cropsey who ends up horribly burnt after a prank gone wrong and enacts his revenge on the campgoers years later. When he returns covered in burnt Burns and wielding a pair of garden shears, Cropsey goes on a killing spree. He murders an incredible amount of campers before being taken down and burned to a crisp. Is it poetic or cyclical? But in the end, the terror never stops. See, by surviving the terrible prank and returning for revenge, Cropsey cemented himself as a classic legend. Campers will be telling the tale for generations and might inspire a brand new killer to take up the reins. Sure, the burning doesn't actually follow the legend of Cropsey, but it has all the hallmarks of a lasting legacy. Coming in at number three, we've got the hook. How many times have you heard this legend? A group of friends or lovers or whatever all packed into a car and they hear some news about a maniac on the loose. Then a hook appears from the darkness and disembowels everyone and anyone guilty of the sin of being alive. Classic. This tale is brought to late 90s light in the slasher reviving I Know What You Did Last Summer. After covering up a hit and run, four young friends find themselves followed by a fearsome fellow. The killer dons a rain jacket and hat and runs around with a hook as his preferred murder weapon. Of course, the message he's sending is, I know what you did last summer. While the movie itself is fairly straightforward and doesn't do much to push the story to new levels, it did reinvigorate the slasher market and bring this urban legend to a whole new audience. Writer Kevin Williamson decided he wanted to give a nod to the old urban legend and then introduce a new one. The four main characters reference the classic hook story at the beginning of the film as a sign of what's to come. Then the new killer appears, giving birth to a new legend. Coming in at number two, we've got Candyman. Speaking of hooks, here's a movie urban legend for the ages. 
Tony Todd himself became somewhat of a living legend after this movie dropped back in 1992. Based on a short story by the ever-impressive Clive Barker, this flick follows a graduate student who is particularly interested in urban legends. This interest in tall tales turns into a thesis, and then a curse. Helen Lyle comes across the urban legend of Candyman, the ghostly artist who was murdered in the 19th century. After doing some research, she discovers that a lot of people believe that Candyman is responsible for the deaths of people in a housing project. It's said that if you repeat the name Candyman five times in front of a mirror, he will appear. Skeptical and stupid, Helen does just that, but with no noticeable results. Soon after, though, all sorts of weird stuff starts happening. Of course, there's a false positive when she encounters a young gang leader who carries a hook, seemingly disproving the legend. This makes it so much worse in the end, as the real Candyman is still out there causing mayhem. This bait and switch is what makes the legend so effective, too, because it affirms the general public's belief that legends are just stories while letting the real danger run free. As the beekeeping hook-handed killer continues on his spree, we learn about the legend too. It has roots in historic events and has remained prevalent in communities because of this. Candyman was the son of a slave and was unable to experience the world as a truly free man. This resulted in his hook hand, his death, and his immortal story. It's also worth noting that the method of appearing is rooted in urban legends as well. Candyman appearing in mirrors is a phenomenon that finds its origins in real structural flaws in old housing complexes. Apartments could be connected by medicine cabinet and home invaders might find their way inside by crossing through the mirror. So Candyman created its own horror movie urban legend and made use of the medicine cabinet invasion tale. Fascinating. Coming in at number one, we've got the Halloween School Bus Massacre. If you're looking for Halloween-y horror movies, Trick or Treat is one of the best of all time. Five atmospheric and awesome tales tied together in one tight little package. Easily one of the best yearly watches that has seemingly only gotten better with time. One of the stories featured here gives birth to a new urban legend that feels classic and new at the same time. In the fictional town of Warren Valley, there's a legend about a school bus. This bus would take a group of children with disabilities to and from school every day. The driver knew all the kids and was trusted by them. One day, the parents of these children decided that they were tired of taking care of them. Awful, I know. So they pooled together an inordinate amount of money and convinced the bus driver to dispose of the kids. On Halloween, he walked up and down the aisle, handing one last treat to the costume children. Once his final task was complete, he drove the bus into the quarry, killing all but himself. Ever since that fateful day, local kids have been bringing eight lit jack-o'-lanterns to the quarry as a tribute to the eight children involved. If they don't, the dead passengers might rise from the dead. I love the idea of a local legend like this coming to life on Halloween. Of course, in the movie, something does go wrong and the corpses do indeed rise. It's an effective little piece of storytelling and kind of makes me want to visit Warren Valley just to pay my respects. If only the town wasn't a legend. It kind of makes you want to pen your own urban legend, doesn't it? There's nothing quite like a local legend. There's something special about the unique flair any given town can have. What did you think of the list? What's your favorite horror movie urban legend? What legend would you adapt to make a feature film? Make sure you let me know down in the comments. Speaking of comments, let's take a look at some of your more dusty ones from the top five smartest decisions made in horror movies. Whiskey Brewer says, where were you, childs? Changing my name to Blair. Ah, brain fart. That's shameful. I'm even standing in front of a The Thing poster. My bad. I suppose I'll be hearing about that goof for the next few months. Named for a Nightmare says, I forgot which saw it was. They all kind of blurred together now, but when Buddy is drowning with his head in a box and then jukes himself in the throat with a pen to breathe through until he's saved, I saw it like, ew, but smart. Honestly, there are a couple Saw moments that could make the list if you do a part two. I think that bit was Saw 5? And yeah, there are very few situations where I'd recommend a home tracheotomy, and this is one of them. Miggs says, Erin from Your Next, pretty much everything she does in that movie. Yeah, I'd have to agree. A lot is instinct though, and that final axe trap is just unfortunate. Noodle Monkey 15 says, nice Beetlejuice cosplay, Keegan. Oh, I didn't realize the dark circles under my eyes were that bad. The paleness, I get. Deshaun Gibson says, I watched all of these. You got a decent watch list then, eh? Keep up the good work. That's all the time we have for today. Before I eat some coffee and drink some pancakes, make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe for more mythical madness. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.